Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm Anna Brensen, and um, so I'm as well. I'm a PhD student um, at uh, the Simon University of um, Savon Moulin, and um, my my research is on uh, especially on managing and public perception of uh, World Heritage Serial Sites. I'm here today. I present uh, together with. Um, Melanie Duval, but who is obviously not here. So um, anyway, um, I will be talking about um, <coughs> connecting world heritage serial properties, and I'll be also you'll see I'll be connecting a bit some of our presentations that we already saw or we will see <laughs> today. So um, I. Um, well, I'll do my presentation for um, for time. Um, in four points, I'll present the World Heritage, and I will insist on the serial properties. I'm not sure if you know the, this, uh, this criteria, so I, will, I would like to precise some points. Then pile dwelling sites, not sure as well if you, how much you, you know them, so I might briefly present them. And then I will insist on the showcase of this generating international logbook regatta. Then I would like to conclude with some reflections on how this project contributes to the connection of World Heritage sites. So the Mm. So with this uh, UNESCO World Heritage Convention, actually in 1972, what we got is it was the international recognition that the local heritage is um, beyond local significance. These heritage sites, they also have uh, a global importance and uh, represent a common responsibility. There is one category that insists um, that moreover um, embodies this, uh, this idea which um, and consolidates the concept is the one of uh, UNESCO World Heritage Serial Properties, which is going to be so then the category on which I would like to insist a bit. Because as opposed to the singular property, uh, the Serial World Heritage uh, Properties are composed of two or more elements um, that are separated in space. Uh, these sites can have national or uh, transnational or how we call them, transboundary, um, transboundary spatial configuration, but only together then they represent this universal outstanding value. Um, so they embody in explicitly in, in in explicit manner this uh, UNESCO concept as a common international good, uh, whose social role is um, increase the um, so it's connecting communities, then increase their sense of solidarity but also help to structure their uh, global, global identity. But, so, although encouraging this, uh, these inscriptions of serial sites for their symbolic uh, dimension, um, UNESCO itself acknowledges the complexity of their structure, of the government, the governance, and uh, also of the public perception. So, in the, in the actual, let's say there's a, sort of like a, quite an absence of the precise guidelines. And within, in this context, every, every property has to find its own way, I mean, its own um, modus vivendi, which then is largely defined by the, um, by, uh, by the obligatory common management plan, uh, which is required uh, by UNESCO and this common management plan, um, as for all the other also um, singular properties, implies conservation, uh, protection and valorization. It is also recommended by UNESCO that for the serial uh, properties, um, this uh, national management plan should be carried out by international coordination body uh, composed of national decision makers uh, who guarantee, whose role is to guarantee the compatibility of local projects with the UNESCO politics uh, and the general management plan. So now I'd like to, as I said, I would like to present you briefly uh, one serial heritage property in particular, which are the prehistoric pile dwelling uh, sites around the Alps, of which uh, Cyril was talking already um, in the beginning of the afternoon, which is then, as we said, a series of 111 elements archaeological sites present in six different Alpine countries that were inscribed into UNESCO World Heritage List in 2011. 
So their significant, uh, significance was internationally recognized, especially for the scientific value of the well-preserved prehistoric uh, organic matter. Mm, but because this, uh, these archaeological sites are, um, the majority is underwater or in peat box, only little is really accessible to public in situ. Um, and uh, we have to acknowledge that the majority of artifacts is, um, is kept in the reserves or in the museums, which causes the, the problem that these museums sometimes are really far away from the original sites, which causes a dissociation of the local community with their, uh, with their heritage. So, to, uh, so many in situ valorizations are then proposed, such as walkways, uh, educational boards, or um, reconstructions of pile dwelling structures, which helps to reinscribe the, these sites uh, into the living place and reconnect the local population with what is often perceived as invisible <laughs> heritage. Um, the um, the exper experiential methods are also uh, considered as significant, uh, as per um, particular performance for the social acceptation of this type of heritage. On the other hand, um, this site, so the pile dwelling sites were also recognized for being testimony of cultural exchange and the interaction between the regions in uh, around the Alps in particular. So now the question we have is, if, um, if the valorization of the punctual, uh, of the punctual sites serves to the local um, appropriation, how then this international heritage can be transferred to the global community? Or if we put it uh, differently, how to put in light the, uh, this international network and how to increase the awareness of the local, um, of the local community and construct, uh, construct the global identity? In this context, then I propose to take a look at itinerating logboat regatta. So when we're talking about uh, the logboats, <coughs> we have to think of uh, the reconstructions of the vessels that were normally found, uh, that were found uh, in uh, uh, pile-dwelling archaeological sites. This regatta is thus a course of two logboats uh, competing sim simultaneously and can take from four to eight people, <laughs> depending on the type, size, but also on the um, quality of the reconstruction. Um, for, so for the race, uh, two categories were done, the local and the international uh, category of competitors who have to pedal some few hundred meters. Um, this, um, of course, this regatta is not to be seen as a qualification for some sort of, I don't know, maybe a World Cup, but uh, at the end, nevertheless, um, uh, uh, so the, the, the trophy is given to the best to the best group, and then next year handed over to the next winner. So this chronology then uh, tells us little about, um, so the itinerating logboat regatta was first organized in 2014, then it moved in, uh, in, in Switzerland, uh, where the idea actually of uh, making international uh, became more tangible. So in 2015, the international competitors were invited to participate. In 2016, we see it travel to the other side of the Alps. 2017 came back to the France. 2018 it was organized in Ljubljana, Slovenia. In 2019 it's going presumably to Lake of Litera, Italy. But we don't. So this chronology this tells us a little about the um, uh, about the process uh, that uh, were happening within local population, stakeholders, and uh, the international community. So I try to make some schematization that I would like to. Uh, present you right now to maybe explain some of the internal happening. So if the first local regatta uh, was organized uh, in uh, Bill, um, it was actually not um, the very first, uh, the very first animation, um, um, animation and valorization of pile valleys through the log uh, reconstruction, but normally, I mean, we, we know that uh, this sort of valorization of pile dwelling sites already took place before, but, the, um, but in a very local um, time and uh, space context. So in 2014, the idea was, uh, was set up to, to make it international. And then in 2015, so the second regatta in Bill takes place. And then this time with this international participation. Uh, this, uh, this event actually answered a latent need for tangible cooperation uh, between the countries participating in this pile dwelling serial 
inscription in the way that goes beyond the um, uh, administra administrative uh, policies of uh, management plan. So the idea of shared pearl dwelling uh, heritage was given the expression that even the local population could perceive because it was physically embodied by actually the foreign participants. For some publics as well, these international regattas are the first time they realize the pile dwelling uh, heritage exists be beyond their uh, local community. Mm, so then this first international regatta also helped to strengthen the links uh, among the international participants. And it is to note that they, then, then further on, they, um, they were majorly represented by professional and academic archaeologists, and they would later start to form a core of what we will call the international category of competitors. In 2016, the regatta was organized in Austria at Athensi Lake uh, by the local pile dwelling valorization association with two log boats reconstruction, rec uh, reconstructions made prior to the event. Surprisingly, at the time, regatta was organized independently to the point where national coordinators uh, and consequently the international community was almost left out. Ultimately, they, um, they managed to, to step in and, um, and manage to continue to assure the international aspect of, uh, of this event. So the, um, in 2017, in, uh, in France, the uh, situation was quite inverse. Actually, uh, a really strong top-down uh, approach was necessary uh, to guarantee the continuation of the international regatta as local uh, community ignored the, the existence and the potentials uh, of the pile dwelling heritage. So the decision makers had to identify and then uh, convince uh, the local community of long-term potentials of this heritage. But nevertheless, this regatta then represented a positive premise and a positive and a successful story who uh, at the end involved the local uh, community and in international participants with, a risk, uh, with also um, reconstructions of, um, of log boats, uh, of, uh, of the log boats. So this vertical cooperation uh, was then uh, between the local stakeholders and national decision makers was then continued and carried out in, 2000, uh, in 2018 when regatta was organized in, uh, in Ljubljana, Slovenia. This time a uh, careful cooperation was, um, was done between an association of experimental archaeology who, um, who did, uh, so between the association of the of experimental archaeology together with a national coordinator coordination body, uh, linking then the international regatta with an ongoing log boat reconstruction project of which we just um, heard with the presentation of the poster. So uh, this, um, this log boat reconstruction project started already two years earlier um, and the, uh, the international regatta just uh, sort of took part in, uh, in this project as well. In 2019, the regatta will go to Italy to the Lake of Ledra. And the choice was made because of the great enthusiasm of a uh, local museum to host the event. Um, also on the, um, on the event of their renovation and reopening um, of their structure. So to pass then on my fourth, uh, fourth point and then to, uh, to the conclusion, I would like to make just three observations. The first one is that actually the choice of every year's regatta um, organization place is not obvious nor easy as we have six countries and 111 sites that are potential uh, candidates. Although much depends on local community that has to be ready to welcome and support the event, um, but also it depends on the national decision makers um, who then have to carry out an equilibrated uh, politics for all of the concerned territories. Uh, the second part is that we see that this idea of the international um, international aspect of regatta in a way functions as a framework within which the local aspirations are then developed and declined. So we can so we can say that for this it has purely local character because it also may it also makes evidence of different values that the same heritage can represent in Switzerland. So um, the pile dwellings were already known and the international regatta helped to its inter internationalization. 
um, in Austria, the regatta prompted the collaboration between the national um, stakeholders, uh, the, between the local stakeholders and the national coordinator. Same for France, where regatta also contrib uh, contributed to the general sensibilization of the local public. And in Slovenia, regatta represented an important part in another, um, in another project. So, beside the state, there is one thing that has to be noted. What is being observed throughout these years uh, and what is becoming symptomatic is that the competitors in the international category are the same uh, social professional stakeholders over and over again. As a consequence, in the international category, there is a lack of competitors uh, coming from the local population that would be ready to participate in other countries' regatta. So every time they participate in their own, but they don't move to, to the others. One of the facts is that the local communities are only strongly solicited when the regatta takes place in their own country, but not sufficiently uh, encouraged to participate in the others. The local population thus um, remains actually, in a way, the receptor of the international uh, dimension without uh, active participation uh, to its construction. So all this, at the end, raises questions on the management of this serial world heritage um, site and site in general in light of common identity construction. So as we see in the case of regatta, this could be an instrument for uh, the animation of the network and improvement of the management. It could permit to enhance uh, the cooperation of all partners, but also, and, um, and more important, the participation of all publics to raise the common awareness uh, of the importance of this heritage. The final question is whether these goals are to be ac uh, achieved by formal and centralized um, administrative body, or the global community and identity construction should be left to evolve organically. So, thank you.